vipassana level of meditation in the beginning in the beginning we tranquilize our mind and calm down bring your mind to one pointness and once the mind calm down there from there we go to vipassana level of meditation so what is the vipassana vipassana means deeply and thoroughly observe so when it come to that observation you have to come out of this all the the categorizing names and the, the what whatever the the pattern that you keep going so like that you have to come out of the this all the 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 systematic training that you develop so that is one thing and you have to be completely be free inside yourself you have to completely be just yourself and uh, without allowing your previous experience to interfere with the moment that you have with the 100% clear mind and without interfering thoughts and observe and another way when you observe the inhalation exhalation in that moment and uh, forget about this is inhalation or this is exhalation go to the depth and experience the change so observe without comments yourself with observe without chattering observe without self interfering involving so because in experience what you experience and the experiencer the both the same it is not different when you can observe as different there is no duality inside your experience so what you feel and it is you and what you to to go through it's you it's not somebody else or ex, the the experience is not someone else so don't keep that duality and little by little little by little experience it to yourself and knowingly the complete that the complete it is you and that way that what you experience become more clear that is what happening once you accept that that what you experience as you it become more clear so that clarity will help you to to recognize it as it how it come to be as the it, it it's in natural process that is what you need whatever happen recognize it in natural process natural way without any idea or without any thoughts and then in the beginning we go with the with the our self experience for that to stay with your own experience in the very moment in this very moment what you can experience the very first thing is the form so the inhalation exhalation is your form and stay with it and inhale when the inhalation happen the whatever rise as the feeling and sensation and mental formation it's mean recognition and then the the consciousness that understanding all these four things as one is the fourth fifth one and then so what you experience as inhalation going to completely different when it come to exhalation and what you experience as exhalation completely become different when it come to inhalation so observe the change within what you experience it is not a idea it is not a thought it is in the very present moment that it is happening there so you observe that whatever the change happening within moment by moment moment by moment without interfering or without co putting comment on it without having self conversation or the chattering yourself regarding your experience and that way you become more clear with this change happening moment by moment moment by moment even whatever the sound come 
even whatever the sensation arise whatever the aroma or the smell come to you whatever thoughts come to you let it happen but remember the change underneath and see the change once you know the change what is happening there is no holding grasping desire so that is where the lust disappear why because underneath you experience the change within your own experience so that is the 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 first step you come out of the the this blockages this because the our own conditions our own mind block our own understanding so that's what we call hindrance there are five hindrances one is the desire with the, this eye ear nose tongue body mind looking for satisfaction which we call kama chanda the strong desire to find the satisfaction it's nothing this in this anything is not wrong don't put a wrong label if you put wrong label you cannot deal with this this everything is part of our life only thing just try to understand because once you understand it once you see it there is no struggle to come out of it so once you see the change within your own feelings within within your own mind within your own experience once you feel the see the change experience the change what is happening deeply the desire going to fade detach release the current to find the satisfaction with the eye ear nose tongue body mind this the with the this sensual pleasure emotions this everything slow down why because you know things change and once it settle down it help to to drop the resistance there is nothing come against kama chanda the second one is the vyapada the vyapada is the strong anger or the resistance and whatever come against you or when you want to go through the desire whatever the block then you have you have a fight you have a deeper go against with that so that is where the anger arises and most of time we try to hold the anger we try to come out of the anger but we don't see from where it come so that's why mostly we fail to to come out of it because anger is a result come out of the the desire when you take out when you see when you fade the desire anger going to fade and now no desire with the self base and then as a result of that no any resistance or the anger and this save a lot of energy in you because most of the energy more than 3000 calories per day we need to live as ordinary person to maintain our own eye ear nose tongue body mind because the desire that's why it called fire it's burning us inside look for something look for something that is where the last arise when this fire become more higher inside us we it's it's burn and then not only burning ourselves and we try to to pull something towards it that is the last so now you you slowly shut down that fire that all the energy is going to be there with you and then there is no anger and as you know when you get angry you become so weak you are you are all creative mind kill itself and you are that uh, inside very the the well being going to destroy because of the anger that's why we say when you get angry you get old because this each and every cell get affected 
because of the anger. But now this everything disappears. That's why you become healthy. That's why most of time when you go to hospital and this all the cancer, anxiety, depression, this everything come out of this unsatisfaction and the anger. So this everything slow down. So that save a lot of energy and you become healthy and you become well-being, natural. You heal yourself. You need it. So we don't do for that, but I'm just telling it is a result that you gain through this. And so as a result of this all, this, and that you start to recognize things very clearly, and there is a deeper connection happening with others rather than resistance. That's where you feel loving kindness and compassion. So it brings enormous the energy inside you, energize it. The, it, it's a natural process when it energizes inside you and no sleepiness, no tiredness, no, no heaviness in your body. So this kind of things happen. The third hindrance and the fourth one is the doubt regarding the the, 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 the fourth one is that the restless that the restlessness regarding your own being so whatever happened yesterday may be effect for your tomorrow or what going to happen tomorrow comparison with the timeline but now you in the present moment and observing your inhalation exhalation and you see the change and you go with the five aggregate again and again following the change you stay with that you put all the energy, you invest your all energy to sharpen your awareness. So itself, it becomes samadhi and tranquility state and deeper level, you resonate with it, settle down with it. So now you in the present moment and anymore you don't get disturbed out of anything. And the, 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 the fifth one, fifth hindrance, it's the doubt. How the doubt come out? Because now you know how the path work. And that's it where you recognize was the Buddha. So Dhammam Pasati, so Mam Pasati. Now you see what the Buddha said and now you see the Dhamma and now you see who's the Buddha. Otherwise you will never see the Buddha or never understand. Even sometimes face to face, you in person maybe you see the Buddha, but you're not going to see it. So, so that's why this is the met this is a way little by little you have to practice. And remember, start with the inhalation, exhalation, without comment and without chattering yourself, without any argument, just settle down. Just keep observe little by little, little by little. If your mind go here and there, bring it back and stay with the, the sensation. So now we're going to practice a little bit. So your right palm on your left and make it straight in one line and be comfortable with your posture. And scan head to toes three times yourself and say Swapatveva or oh, may I be well and happy three times. Take a moment and think. We gathered here in this moment to practice this ancient meditation technique. All the Buddhas, all the enlightened masters followed this path and achieved wisdom. So we also gathered here to accumulate that knowledge in this moment with this sitting. May my body become more comfortable. May my breath be more smooth. May no difficulties come to me. May all the success come to me. Also think for a moment. This is the last moment we're spending in this very lifetime. 
and detach your mind from all your past memories and as well as any kind of future thoughts. Just try to remain in the present moment, observing the sensation of the inhalation, exhalation. So in the beginning, deeply inhale, exhale three times. Now bring attention to the sensation.
bring your attention to your body and observe your posture. We cultivate loving kindness and compassion in our heart and radiate it as a light through entire this compound, this village, this city, this state, this country, this world, and this universe. And as far as we can through galaxies, other planets, stars, reminding ourselves like this, mentally repeat after me, May all living beings in this universe be well and happy. May everyone be happy and safe. And may their hearts be filled with joy. May all living beings live in security and in peace. Beings who are pale or strong, tall or short, big or small, visible or not visible, near or far away, already born or yet to be born. May all of them dwell in perfect tranquility. Let no one do harm to anyone. Let no one put the life of anyone in danger. Let no one out of anger or ill will wish anyone any harm. Expand the loving kindness and compassion, beginning from your heart, forward, to your backside, to your left side. And to your right side. Downward and upward. To all six directions at once. Like the moon, the sun, Spread the light, spread the energy without any condition, without any limitation, without any resistance, without any judgment. Let your heart to shine with the loving kindness and compassion from the bottom of it with the maximum effort to the highest. Wishing yourself, may all living beings in this universe be well and happy.
Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. So, dear Dhamma friends, as human beings, we all are every day struggling to find the happiness and satisfaction within ourselves. So, this ha through happiness and through satisfaction, not going to arise out of the sensual pleasures. This sensual pleasures is kind of like an ocean. Only thing you have to do, it's you have to maintain it. Maintaining your sensual organs or the pleasures or the department or looking for satisfaction through it to different things. So main, when you maintain it, that that is what called discipline. So the why you have to be disciplined. So the discipline come out of when you have when you trying to experience something or when you have a purpose to achieve for that you have to discipline. So the discipline always come out of that your patris. So what you patris for that patris you need discipline. It's discipline going to become different. Just becoming discipline itself doesn't mean you are going to be good. So you have to look why you have to be good. Even looking for satisfaction, why you want to be satisfied? And then it helps you to see where you are in the moment, in this life map. And then you recognize why you are not happy, not satisfied. So from that point, why you are not satisfied or why you are not happy, once you recognize that from there to reach to what you want to be, where, that where you want to find the happiness to go to that way, you have to maintain your eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind in an according to different protocol according to different ethics. So when it comes to wisdom, when you look for the, the development of, or the understanding of your life, according to that, the way you have to be disciplined completely different. Prisoners also discipline. And the, the people, in, in, in according to even in the hospital, look, they don't they don't do much thing. They are well disciplined. So then, when it come to this discipline idea, actually disciple, disciple. So the 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 student whoever study and need to be disciplined. And just becoming good doesn't make any sense to end the sansar. It's not going to happen. Just, just imagine that uh, everybody discipline themselves. For what? Where I take? Because the terrorists are more disciplined than the religious people drug dealers and all other the smugglers thieves they are they are they are more disciplined than ordinary people in the surplus level of if you take the discipline as a kind of like a maintaining your body but when it come to wisdom the discipline when it come to the the your 
inner peace, understanding, clarity regarding that when you go towards that way, when you become disciplined means it is something else. Not doing something doesn't make you are disciplined. You have to go deeper and see why you are not doing it. If anything related with the greed, hatred or the, the delusion or the self-centered mind. And maybe with your physical and mental and verbal action, you don't do certain behavior. That doesn't mean you are disciplined. So then, where the, the, the discipline should take you? Discipline should take you to, to the reality. Because when you are able to experience the reality, out of that experience, the whatever your bodily or verbally or mentally actions, never going to do harm to yourself or never going to do harm to others. But if you develop kind of bodily, verbally or mentally action or discipline yourself, move away from the reality and then anytime you can, you can do any kind of worse thing to hurt yourself and even to hurt others. So then remember yourself, when you say, I don't do this, look why you don't do that. Question yourself. Is it trying to take you to the reality or the dharma or the true nature or is it trying to take you away from it? So, the mostly in day-to-day -day life, our main struggle, most of life, in ordinary life, our main struggle is not to look for clarity. The most of us, our main struggle, the, we have the fear regarding the death. That is the main struggle that we go through. And most of people become disciplined to postpone the death or escape from the death. Not to get into the, the truth, not to become closer to the truth. So we have the discipline based with the fear. When you look at the world and today we say, don't do this, don't do that. And the most of people don't do it. Why? Because they're afraid they're going to die. Not because of the deeper understanding. What is the process of this? So then when you have the fear based something, how it can take you to understanding? Because the fear, when you have fear based any thoughts, it always separate from the truth. Separate from the truth. It, it happened from the, 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 from the beginning of the civilizations. That's where the, that uh, within these 5,000 years of 10,000 years of the human history from today to backward. And all these religions and uh, the, the philosophers and everybody came within these 10,000 years. The one of the ancient this Vedas and the, this all the Mahabharata and this all this and the, and the Greek philosophy and East and Western, all the philosophy. And when you look, it's, it, it all happened within 10,000 years. So within this 10,000 years, the people have a struggle and people have an idea, people have a, the, the purpose to get into the reality. But before that, we have the mostly come, go, stay away from the, the death, the fear. So still we have, even though that the, when we look at the very nature of the, the world, mechanism of the world, mostly 
we all trying to deal with our life to stay away from the, the death. And why? Why you have to live? What is the very purpose of living? Why you have to stay away from the death? So if you don't understand, if you get not get into the truth or the, the, the direct perception or the clear experience with the nature, you are living itself. It's become kind of like a misery because it's kind of like a become a habit and you go through a pattern and you repeat it and repeat repeat and in that repetition your consciousness shut down when you repeat something there is no awareness when there is no awareness if person live with without awareness when a person live without awareness that person dead the heart can function but that person is dead there is no there is no real real living being so that is what the fear does to us all same thing because when you have the fear that become a struggle itself you to to escape from reality and then with the, this all this all when you become detached from the reality you have fear regarding the death and you try to cover it from from different different angles and that is one of the thing is called intellectual study studying never take you to the truth look at the world and sometimes they, you start to think how look at the world that today our study part is different and our doing part is completely different so when you are study something and when you are intellectually develop something and then why you need another advisor or somebody else to do something out of your wisdom whatever the knowledge you go you have because the very nature of the the truth when you experience truth there is no separation from you and the truth you become itself the truth and then you are very being itself doing there is no understanding and doing so but in day-to-day -day life now what is what is we does we try to understand something separately and then we trying to apply that understanding in the, in a different circumstances in different environment it doesn't work because in this very moment, one, what you understanding itself is applying that you living means you applying your understanding to very this moment. So what you understand intellectually in this very moment, as a theory, you cannot apply it to another situation. And so the, then what is happening? Why we go with the, this intellectual? Why we go with the intellectual? Because your mind detached from the reality because of the, the fear and based with uh, the fear, the, the based with the death and it detached from the reality, cover up that and you try to do many other things. And one thing is intellectual. You try to keep uh, knowingly a lot of things and and you then bound to ideas and the patterns and the methods you screwed up your life and then whoever in front of you you, you even yourself you're not going to recognize and look how how the how, how the psychologists can suicide themselves 
what is the, what is the the where that it can happen how the school teacher can suicide what is that mean what it says how how when how the school teacher can depress do you know what is the outcome going to happen if if a school teacher depressed disappointed unhappy angry do you know what is the outcome going to happen if the if the religious leader become or the monks or the guru or the pastor or the 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 priest or any anybody if that person become greedy do you know what is the outcome going to happen so we are in when we intellectually develop when we detach from the reality that is what happening so then the very nature of the truth there is no duality experiencer and the truth so what you when it come to truth when you see the truth when you see the change there is no experiencer and the change the both become one you change when the day come for you to recognize that that is the day you start to to come above this worldly nature and start to experience the life without that the touching the water so it is a process step by step step by step you have to go but deeper you have to question yourself and why we living if you live with the fear of the death it is not living remember that because that fear itself detach you from the real being itself called life and another thing is that is that is where people go with this all these outside things and people and look for love and depending from love and security because of this the fear we trying to cover up it and the sensual desires this all cover up for our deeper inherent fear but when you see the truth when you become clear with the truth in the deeper level you start to get connected to things and you are not separate itself you not looking for love because you become love it is two different things just think to yourself when you look for love and when you become love how different it is can you can you can you understand that when you look for wisdom and you become the wisdom when you look for freedom you are the freedom when you look for truth you become the truth so see we are the the difference look yourself exercise because that exercise make you discipline that discipline is go towards the the recognition of the wisdom and the direct perception with the the nature that is called dharma that is where the the mind become very clear and pure so that is where we 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 trying to navigate our our life so for that it it is up to you it is your choice because what i say you no need to do that but once you hear it it is up to you to think little bit and see maybe not today maybe not tomorrow maybe one day and you may need this so that day once once you heard this it it going to be there with you and at least one day when you know this is there is something like this 
and then you start to look for that so remember then yourself deeper that peer base the whatever the activities is never going to take us to to wisdom so it is better to rescue your mind from the the this fear for that it's it's happening from little little ways and slowly little by little and that's why getting to the clarity when you are clearly see something when you are clearly experience when you are clearly understand something there is no fear so that's why when you even you practice meditation be very clear with the, your experience when you hear something when you smell eat taste something and when you even you think yourself become very sharp and clear little by little little by little and then you will see in this very moment there is no fear when there is no fear with regarding the death the half of the journey you done so with that there was a student and he looked for mastering sword and he then heard about the samurai and living in high mountain area so he went to see this master and bow to the master and uh, told master i came to learn uh, sword so can you teach me so the master asked before you come here where you learn who's your teacher the student told no i didn't have any teacher but the master told no i don't believe because i can see you had some studies the student told no i didn't have any studies i don't have a teacher you are the only one i just met so then the master asked about his sister and tell me your uh, the history so then again he start to explain about this then the master asked why you decide to to practice the sword because the there is a well known famous uh, saying the sword can kill the person and sword can protect the person it's it's related to the ego ego is the one we protect and ego is once we let go the ego there is no we ourselves so then the master told in the sub an ordinary idea and why you select the sword because do you know the danger with it it going to end you or it going to protect you so then this uh, student told when i was a child one day i had uh, i i was going to school then i saw very old man and uh, so that day he was so hungry i had my lunch with me so then i offer the lunch and because i saw this old man is kind of like a beggar and was so hungry and i offer the so so then this old man told you offered me the lunch and you saved my life and uh, i have to give something but i don't have anything because i am i am a beggar but there is something i can give and one day it may help you and then the student was so happy because uh, children like to get always something and then the student oh, yeah yeah you can you can give me so whatever you can give me so then the, this old man told to this child don't have fear for death so it kind of like for this child it's like a the a rainbow appeared and he did start to lighten his inside him and he start to look what is this death and from that day 
every day when other people run for, away from the dead, this child start to go towards it and look for it. What this is? What this is? And then the, the one day, he didn't have any fear for death. So then the, the child, this student told, I don't have any fear for death. So that's why I select the sword. And then the master told, you are already mastered the sword and you don't need any teachings. So in our life, we also same like that. So our ego is kind of like a sword. It sometimes protect us and it can kill us. And when the day come for you yourself, if you are able to with your sword ship to kill your ego, that is where your liberation or the enlightenment happen. So with that, I bless upon with this good practice, may all of you be well, happy and peaceful. May no harm come to you. May no difficulties come to you. May no problems come to you. May you also have the patient, courage, understanding and determination to meet and overcome inevitable difficulties in your life. During this time period, may everyone stay healthy and safe. And finally, may all of you attain supreme bliss of Nibbana. Sabbhityo vajjantu sabbaro go vinasatu mate bhavatantarayo suki digayuko bhava ittavata chami sampadang punya sampadang sabbe deva numodantu sabba sampati siddhya sabbe bhuta anumodantu sabba sampati siddhya sabbe satta anumodantu sabba sampati siddhya idam me punya kammang asavakaya vahang hotu sabba dukkha pamunchitu bless you